Hey everybody, welcome back. This is a week seven pre-recorded lecture for Taiji and Qigong. I want to wish everybody a happy Lunar New Year. Um, it is now year of the metal ox, right? So you all have probably heard um, through the internet or other uh, avenues, various ideas about what uh, this year might mean. Um, we did talk about astrology as being an important part of uh, the eight branches of traditional Chinese medicine. Um, very basically astrology being uh, living in harmony with timing, right? If there's certain timings that we can take advantage of and live in harmony with, um, the most basic one being day and night, a uh, broader one being the cycles of the year. But cogently also for our discussion about Chinese medicine and how it relates to Chinese culture is this idea of the 60 year cycle. 12 animals is 12 years and we have five phases and these two, five times 12 equals 60. Um, so there is a, a cycle of 60 different flavors of energy um, or digestibility of the ambient chi that we go through on this cycle. Um, I'm gonna share a link with you all to um, one take on this. It's a little bit of a long take, but I'm um, seeing as everyone here is interested in Chinese culture and uh, also in Chinese medicine, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna recommend that you go ahead and read the whole thing before our next meeting together. Um, you can skim parts of it if you feel like it bogs down a little bit. Um, I'd also encourage everyone to come prepared to share, or maybe in the forum, we can have a discussion about other resources that you've enjoyed reading about for the uh, uh, prognostications about the year of the metal ox. Um, some of them will resonate more than others for different people. And a lot of that has to do with what the view is that you're taking, right? So on a very broad brushstroke basis, if we wanna think about any coherent um, system of belief, we wanna think about view, method, and fruition, right? Where view is your cosmology. View is where you think you are operating in the universe, what you think the universe is, is sort of um, comprised of, um, what the central problems, issues, or questions are within your philosophy or, or cosmology. Method being what you do about it, and fruition being what happens when you do those things, right? So the same practice, the same um, activity, if we're um, operating from a different view, um, the same method will lead to a different fruition. Uh, what I like about the uh, examination of the metal ox year that I'll be sharing with you all is that um, the author takes a very broad view. He takes, um, it's a very, very deep view, a very sort of uh, core non-conceptual Taoist view of what the cosmology is that we're operating in. Um, and the method it ends up being, how do we be with what is, right? So his view comes from this deep Taoist view that the universe is self-resolving, right? Self-resolving. And that means that actually, no effort needs to be undertaken. There just needs to be a certain um, harmonizing with what's happening, right? In order to bring us into touch with what actually is, right? So right now you're sitting here listening to this audio that I've prepared in advance. Um, the view that's being propagated in this, in this, uh, in this uh, article that I'm sharing with you is that our goal, our, our, our view is that everything is self-resolving. Everything is actually on a deep, deep universal level, okay right now, right? So the method is how do we be with that, right? And the fruition is we're with the present moment, right? So we'll find that there's different views, methods, and fruitions that can be brought into this, right? So if you're approaching astrology from an idea that the view is, um, uh, the universe is a game and we're trying to succeed by gathering the most, most resources, right? By being successful in a material sense, say, that's, that's a legitimate view that a lot of people have. That's sort of the view of a capitalist economy, right? Um, you're supposed to gather all the nuts you can and the one that gathers the most somehow wins, right? Um, what you win, not always disclosed, but sometimes it's, it's you know, you win status or you win comfort or you win um, wealth, um, whatever, it, whatever, you know, the, the implicit, view is of that, uh, sort of embedded in that, then the method would, would be, okay, well, let's use astrology to be, get, get rich and garner resources, right? And that's, that's, a, that's a, a part of almost all astrology, right? 
almost all prog prognostication is like, um, how do we have prosperity? Maybe we negotiate about what prosperity actually is, right? And then the fruition would be, okay, I've done these things and hopefully now I, I have more wealth, I have more prosperity, right? So that's starting from a different view. You know, the, the, the name of the game is garner resources. The method is what do I do to get those resources? And the fruition should be, I get more resources, right? So view method to fruition. If you start with a view that everything's okay, the method is just be what, with what is, and the fruition is you're back where you started. So it kind of eats itself. And this is, this is a very, very, very Taoist sort of Wu Wei, Wu Wei, um, effortless achievement kind of view. Um, in activities of human life, we find that this is often, you know, the, the, the view is too, a view that's this big is too vague, you know, um, because it leaves people a little bit rudderless. Well, if I, all I'm trying to do is be with what is, then what am I doing, you know? Um, And I think that's a leg legitimate question, right? And, and, and we bring it to our own personal practice. It's also a, a question like, okay, well, wh why am I practicing? And um, the, the idea there being that there's habits and patterns that bring you out of direct connection with the present moment. And so the practice is to soften those patterns to be with what actually is. And the fruition is you're more effortlessly present with what is. Right, but there's still a gong fu. There's still a skill development, right? There's still an unwiring of these patterns, right? Um, so in certain views, that might be the unraveling of karma, right? So if we're coming from sort of a South Asian, um, uh, Hindustani influenced view, then this is a little bit more prevalent, right? The, the idea that you know um, you're working to unravel karmas of past lives or activities within this life that have created um, energetic residue. Right? And so there's various yogas or activities that you can do to unravel those. And some of those are yogas of worship, some of those are yogas of work, some of those are yogas of asana, of physical practice. Some of them are um, yogas of avoiding harmful activities or engaging in um, uh, uh, activities that promote health and harmony, right? Um, and then the fruition would be, if you do these, then over time your karmas will be resolved. Um, and in some of the views, the idea is, you know, you, you know, aggregate good karma and that will lead you to a better birth in the next life, right? So if you're born low caste, you do good things and you're born upper caste, right? And if, then if you're at the very top, then the upper caste allows you access to, um, more access directly to the divine, right? So that's one view method fruition kind of idea. Um, when I was, uh, I spent a short amount of time in a Zen Buddhist monastery in Korea when I lived in Korea. And it was really interesting for me because it was a, it was an international Zen center and the, the people I was with were Korean and international monks that were practicing a fairly high view. Um, and I, I mentioned this guy before, um, uh, Zen Master Seong San. You know, his, his main teaching was this practice of I don't know, where you would inhale, who am I? And you would exhale, I don't know. Um, and that's a very, very, very immediate view method fruition. There's not a lot of movement there. And so we'd be sitting there in the Zen hall practicing this, this, this practice, this sort of non-conceptual practice. And then we go downstairs and there'd be the, the Korean lay practitioners who had paid monks to chant sutras so that their kids could get into a better school, right? So this is a very different view method fruition in the same building within the same spiritual practice, right? So, um, I don't want to prescribe any particular view for you. Um, I will gesture towards the idea that our, our Chinese medicine is embedded at its deepest level in a very, very, very um, wide open view of the universe. This, our universe is as a, a cyclical self-resolving phenomenon that resolves in patterns, right? So day resolves into night and night resolves back into day. Inhale resolves with exhale, exhale resolves with inhale. Life resolves into death, but death doesn't stop and it resolves back into life. So this very circular cyclical kind of view. Um, but within the medicine, we may, find, we may find other perspectives as well. You know, um, Chinese medicine for peak performance, which I, I don't think is the best way to engage with Chinese medicine, but we sure can. You know, Tom Brady, for instance, this gentleman who um, just won yet another Super Bowl, um, engages with somebody who's uh, a personal trainer whose views are, are whose practices uh, have been informed by Qigong and Chinese medicine, right? But he's using it for peak performance and, and it works, you know, he's the Super Bowl guy. He's, he's at, at the peak level of human performance for a suspend, sustained amount of time. And we're gonna find um, patients that are like that too. Um, 
and my suggestion is not that this view is wrong, just that it's it's perhaps a partial view. Um, and we want to keep our eyes open to, you know, what, what are the bigger views? And also like, what what's your view, right? What's your view? Um, in the past, I've had, and I don't know anybody well enough right now yet to, to figure out where you're coming from, but in the past I've had, have had students that have entered acupuncture school with a tacit view that they haven't seen that the body is a machine that breaks, right? This is the view of their medicine. Okay, the body's a machine and sometimes it breaks and we use tools to fix it when it's broken, like a machine, right? And so they have a very, very um, kind of tight view of what their medicine is capable of doing. Okay, well, your body is broken because this ligament that ties your clavicle to your scapula is broken, right? And we're gonna use these needles to help fix that, that break, right? And it's very materialistic, right? The needles are these material objects that have a direct material effect on your body, which then leads to this machine-like organi organism being fixed. Um, and uh, having gone through uh, a doctorate in orthopedic acupuncture, I can tell you that th this view is fairly successful and we can use it. And it's so successful that the physical therapists and chiropractors are, are uh, trying to appropriate parts of our medicine because it is so successful. Um, and the acupuncturists like myself are a little bit upset that you're just trying to take one piece of it instead of trying to take the bigger view that yes, you could describe this as a mechanical shortcoming when you, you're, you know, the, the ligaments that bind your clavicle to your scapula are dysfunctioning, right? But there's an energetic aspect too. Um, and you can't actually explain some of the results through a straight mechanistic uh, description of that. So for instance, if somebody comes to me with shoulder pain, maybe I haven't diagnosed it. It's this ligament that ties your scapula to your um, clavicle together, that's at issue. And I can stick a needle in your, in your shin or in your ankle and then have you activate your shoulder and you can report to me that both the function and the pain levels have gone down and there's no biomechanical view yet that can describe why that would be happening, right? So if you're tight in your view around that, then this, um, you're, you're gonna scratch your head and you say, well, that, that, that doesn't make sense, right? That doesn't make sense to me because mechanically, there's no reason why a needle in your ankle should affect your opposite shoulder, right? But pragmatically, clinically, we can, we can do this and we can find, oh no, there is, there's a network of influences that might not be best described by mechanisms or um, material descriptions of what's going on, but rather energetic, maybe the energetic, maybe the interconnected network within our bodies, which we describe very um, clearly as the channel system and various relationships we can find within the channel system of acupuncture. Um, so, I'm not prescribing any particular view for anybody studying Chinese medicine, but I want people to be clear that they do have a view, right? They do have a view. Um, and what view you enter with is going to influence what kind of um, information is more or less palatable to you. Um, so let's, at least let's be, let's be explicit about that because right now in Western medicine, they don't acknowledge that they have a materialist reductionist view of the universe, that things should be described best as their parts, right? and that the universe is a machine that sometimes goes wrong and sometimes you need to swap out, replace, or adjust one of the parts in order for that machine to happen. Um, and it is a very, very um, restricted view of the universe that, that doesn't recognize things that are qualitative as opposed to quantitative with uh, sufficient weight, I would argue. Not that quantitative data can't give you some information, but it's gonna miss something. And if all you're looking for is numbers, it means that you discount everything that can't be described by a number, right? As irrelevant to the conversation when we know these things are very relevant. So long-winded preamble, uh, I'd like folks to take a look at the um, astrology information about the, the Chinese uh, year of the ox that we've, we've just entered. And I invite people to share information uh, that they've found um, compelling and then look at it, look at, okay, you know, I didn't like that thing that Joe shared it. Well, A, it went on forever. I mean, it's a very long explication, but it's gonna give you depth to astrology that you might, might, uh, might miss um, elsewhere. Um, but also look and say, okay, well, what is it about this description that I find appealing? Why did I, why did I like this one or this one better? Like, what does that say about my own view? And what do, what do I think about the method to address that view? And what is the fruition that I'm actually looking for, right? Um, and try to be explicit about that instead of implicit. You know, try to bring that up to the front. So at least we understand um, where we're beginning to operate from in this whole big mix. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the video now. Um, take a look. Uh, 
at the at the information that I shared, there's no other real assignments you're reading this week. It is Chinese New Year and we have health journal assignment due. So I'm not gonna lay it on heavy for you and we'll actually keep this video short as well so that you do have time to wrap up that health journal. Okay, everybody. See you on Thursday.